Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. Alright guys, let's do this problem that says determine the magnitude and direction theta of the minimum force P needed to pull the 50 kilogram roller over in the smooth step. So we did a problem a second ago where theta was given, but this time we have to determine which one is the angle theta to have the minimum amount of force. And this is kind of a cool problem because how often are we trying to roll over something over a small step? And we can't really figure out the angle of what it is, or at least it did happen to me in the past. So let's get to it. So first let's draw the free body diagram. We have a normal here. We have a reaction at B, let's call it F of B, that reaction. We have the weight of the roller. We have P and theta, and that's about it. Now, it's important to determine the angles, all the angles that we're gonna be working with. So, I'm gonna redraw this triangle right here. And this is the step. This is B, point B is right here. This is point A. And I'm gonna call this phi, this angle right here phi. A, B, let's call this C, and let's call this D. So we have to find phi first. Now, you know that by trigonometry, trigonometry the cosine of phi is equal to AD over AC because of the top <coughs> right triangle. But you know that AD is equal to AC minus DC by looking at these two lines right here. So that means that this is equal to AC minus DC is equal to O I mean over AB. And this is cosine of phi. So phi is equal to the cosine inverse of this whole thing, which is AC minus DC over AB. And we have all these values. We know that AC is equal to the radius of the roller, which is 0.3 meters. I just converted it to meters. DC is equal to right here, the uh, height of the step, which is 0.05 meters. Don't put 0.5 meters, don't make that mistake. Over again, 0.3 meters which is AB, again, the radius of the roller. Plug all this into your calculator and you're gonna get that phi is equal to 33.56 degrees. Now we have to understand the second part. We know that the sum of the moments at B is equal to zero. And we know that the moment that the roller starts going over the step, this normal is equal to zero. That's important to know too. So, if we're at B, we're right here, we're doing the sum of the moments, we know that there's a moment B created by the, by the projection of the weight and that projection that happens perpendicular to this line of the triangle. So, it's the weight we're talking about this projection right here, okay? And this projection is given by the weight times the sine of phi, which is the angle that we just found. And it's trying to turn it clockwise, so this is negative. This is a zero, I swear. And then we have P. But P, we don't really know the angle theta at which is happening, but notice this. Let me redraw this part a little bigger down here. Uh, actually, yeah, down here. So we have a point B. We have the weight, and like I told you, this is the projection of the weight generating moment, and this is phi, okay? And then we have P, let me draw it at an angle like that, P. And we have this angle theta that we don't know. 
and we know that P is generated in a moment in the projection of the projection of this um, the projection that is perpendicular to the lever arm that is trying to turn and it's trying to turn it this way. So let's call this angle. I think this is alpha, I think. Um, and over here, I forgot to say the lever arm, which is 0.3, which is the radius of the, the radius of the roller. So the moment B generated by P is equal to, it's positive because it's trying to turn it, like I said, kind of clockwise. And as P times the cosine of the angle. Again, times 0.3. So this is very important. If we solve for P, we get that P is equal to the weight times 0.3 times the sine of phi all over 0.3 cosine of alpha, I think this is again. Sorry if I'm messing up my Greek letters. We can cancel this 0.3 and we get the weight times the sine of phi over cosine of this angle. Now, there is something to this. So, in order for the moment being generated by P, in order for P to be maximized, let's, let's say, let's put it this way, then this needs to be as big as it can be. And remember, the function for cosine looks something like this. So, <clears throat> If this is equal to zero, that means that P is perfectly, let me erase this, P is perfectly perpendicular to generate the maximum amount of moment. It's perfectly perpendicular, right? Because here's where the maximum the maximum moment is generated. And that is at 90 degrees or pi over two, right? <clears throat> that means that this angle right here, which is theta, is equal to phi. Does that make sense? Because this is phi and this is a 90 degree. And if this is a 90 degree, that means that theta is equal to phi. If theta is equal to phi, this is equal to 33.56, which is equal to theta. And now that we have theta, it's easy to calculate the rest of the problem. So we know that P, like we said before, is equal to right here, we're gonna plug in I mean, by looking at, uh, sorry, I lost my question. P is equal to W sine of 33.56. We plug in the weight and the weight is equal to 50 kilograms times 9.81 times the sine of 33.56. So P is equal to 271.15 Newtons. And that is the minimum force of P and the angle, the, the best angle for getting the most out of it is, is 33.56. So final answer and final answer.